we reported on one of the saddest stories on my radio show this week that I think I've ever reported on. And it was about a football player, and I think he played with the Steelers. And he is a Army, what? Ranger. Arm Ranger. And he's a football player. And so they got ready to do the national anthem. And the whole team stayed in the shower, you know, in the back. And this one player came out and he, you know, did the national anthem. He stood alone. And, and as a result of standing alone, America was on his side. They started to buy his products. They really liked that courage because it's not easy standing alone. And then, so they really, they were talking about him. They really admired him. And then either that same day or the next day, he came out and apologized for doing that. And saying that he went against his team. Uh, he was sorry for it. And I'm like, wow, his life would never be the same again. He lost his life because he did the right thing. And the majority of the people did not, his team. And they convinced him to get with them. So he turned away from good. He turned away from the truth back to the lie. And he's not, unless he repents, he's never going to be happy again. Isn't that like a sad story? And, and he turned away because of the pressure. Because the team, and the team is doing the wrong thing. It's not like they're doing the right thing. And I say this to you, be, that when you are standing up for what is right, 99.999.9, not all the time, 0.9, you're going to have to stand alone, but God is with you. And that's how you see the strength of God working through you, because you know you're standing up for what is right, and he's with you. And I it, it just broke my heart to see that man lose his soul like that. And, went along, and the player, I mean, the uh, coach is a black guy, a black coach. And so I can imagine the pressure that was put on him. And he caved in. Isn't that amazing? Anybody ever caved in under pressure? He's like, oh, I'm sorry for telling the truth. I was just playing. Anybody ever done that? Nobody here, huh? You have? Well, if you're standing for what is right, don't back down. You know it's right. You know it's true. Don't back down. And this guy backed down. And, and it's just sad that he did because he lost his life. Yeah. You know, he went, on, he went back on the wrong side. And those people that he turned back to don't like him anyway. They're going to be gone their way after a while. He'll be left on his own. And, and he's separated from what is right. Isn't that like an amazing story? It is an amazing story. I've gone through so much in the last 27 years, and I'm glad I did, because it caused me to just enjoy standing alone, you know, because I know God is with me. As long as I know I'm right, if I'm wrong, I quit to say, hey, I'm wrong, I'm sorry about that. But when you know you're right, it blesses your soul to stand for what is right. Can you imagine Jesus backing down because they ran him out of his own hometown? The people, his family member wouldn't stand with him, and... And they hated him because he told the truth. They turned on him and he's like, you know what, Father? I, I can't go through this. This is too much. I know you're with me, but it ain't enough. And then went back and gave in to the pressure of the world. Where would we be today? When you stand against evil, you are being made strong. Even if you feel weak, God is with you. And you're being made strong. And he's giving you wisdom. And a whole lot come with that. Right. It doesn't seem like it, but it really does. You it grow does. when you stand strong. Because when people try to bully you or something and yeah. you don't say anything, they, take, they continue to do that. That's right. If you stand and up, people don't like you anyway when you came. That's right. They, they, they disrespect you because they know that you're weak. Mm -hmm. And so this guy, that was, what was his name, James? Alejandro. Yeah, Alejandro Villanueva. Yeah. yeah. Well, we need to pray for him because, you know, I know it must have been intense pressure for him. I would have been embarrassed to go back out in the world like that and say, oh, I'm just playing. I should have stood up like that. I'd rather go die somewhere. Right. Because he's dead anyway. 
He is disrespectful. Respect it from now on. I guarantee you that that ball player, um, he's a little different than the rest of the ball players anyway. And I bet you he doesn't necessarily fit in exactly anyway because what? how could you first come out uh, against, not against the team, but separate and from the team and right. do what he did anyway? Yeah. He's a little bit different anyway, but it's sad to see him. Cave. Well, not anymore. He's just like him now. Right now he's just like him. When you give into it, you, you become like it. That's how you become like it. You cave in. That's how children become like their parents. After a while, they just give in. They resent it. And in that very moment, you lose your identity and become like whomever you've given into. Isn't that an amazing thing that that can happen to you? It's just remarkable that he's a combat veteran, right? A combat veteran, Army Ranger, apologized for standing for the National Anthem. I know, especially. Yeah. It's, uh, no, it's sad. We have left the reservation. We are in a sci-fi movie. Yeah. This is, we are in an alternate reality. <laughs> yeah. No, it's pretty bad. It really, I was stunned when that man came, did his video, apologizing for standing for truth. It was shocking. It was amazing. But I learned from it. How many here have virtue? You are a virtuous person. Nobody? Is it like doing the right thing? Uh, one person? I got two. When you are a virtuous person, you are a free person. Liberty and virtue, virtue um, um, are the same. They're not separate from one another. Every man and woman who follows what's right, loves what's right with his or her heart, soul, and might uh, is a free person. Those are free people. They are not controlled by the world. They don't care what the world think. They are willing to stand alone for what is right. They are willing to be honest but not hating and judging and putting a per, uh, person down. They are willing to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Even in the crowd, if you have to stand alone, you still stand because you are free, meaning that you're no longer subject to uh, people, places, and things. That's how you would know. You become free. You're no, no longer subject to words. So if people call you names or if they if they say bad things about you or good things, you treat them both the same, knowing that they're imposters. They both are imposters. So you overcome the world when you're a virtuous person because people are looking for the right way. You know, they just haven't been told. Their parents were not good examples. And so this doesn't matter if you were the president or the bomb on the street. You don't care about that. You care about that person's soul because you're free. And God wants us to be free. He came that we might be free, overcome the world, die from the world. The ego dies from the world. And it happens on its own. You can't make it happen. As you're seeking the Father in his right way, these things are being added to you. That makes sense? So you will become free. You won't care. And it just happens. It's just like one day you look around and those things that seem so important to you, or the fear you had of standing up and all that, they're gone and you don't even know when they left. You are changing because you are a spirit and your father is changing your spirit, who you really are. You're a part of him. Isn't that nice? And oh, and the reason I wanted to mention this, I remember a time when most black people were free, they were immoral people, and they were not controlled by words and they were not controlled by who liked them or didn't like them. They were not controlled by that stuff prior to the civil rights movement. But then the enemies of good came in and corrupt them. And now they are controlled by that. They're not a free people because they lost their virtue. Black people used to be a moral people. I remember thinking only white people sin. Growing up in Alabama, I literally thought that. <laughs> I now knew I was wrong. And the reason I thought that because my uncles used to go up to New York and Florida during the summer and, and pick oranges and things like that. And they would come back with these horror stories, what white people were doing. And so I was thinking, wow, white people sin. I was like Louis Farrakhan, I guess. But, but now I know better. But that's how more 
black people were then. And so they were not controlled by the world. They, weren't not, they were not controlled by leaders. They were not controlled by whatever, a government paycheck. But they lost that. And now they're controlled. And so all immoral people are controlled. You cannot control a moral person or a moral people, a virtuous people. You can't control them. You have to demoralize them. And they're doing it to the young people uh, in these schools. Look how immoral young people are today. They have sex at home with their mama in the house. They cuss out their mothers, their parents. They have no respect for the elderly. They don't want to work. They want to party all the time. They want to burn down people's property. They have no value at all. And they have been made to be that way so that they can be controlled. Have y'all noticed that? You have to demoralize them to control them. But a, a virtuous person is a free person. They can't, that cannot happen to them. And so just think about that. All right. I know I saw some hands, but let me just take here because I have one more thing I want to share with you. And, and somebody, George Washington or somebody said there could be no liberty without virtue. I think George Washington said that. Is he the guy that resigned for being president after a while and went back to doing his thing? Yes. Who did that? That was George Washington? Washington. Yeah. He thought, you know what? It's not good for me to be here to be president all this time. He thought it should be a short period. And so he said, without, without, there can be no liberty without virtue. And that is so true. I want you, and out there in TV land, I want you to get to know yourself and see how you are being controlled by people, places, and things. You are being controlled. And the only reason you are, you're not a righteous person. And, and when you see it, don't trip out about it. Just see, wow, this is so true. I'm afraid to speak up. I don't want to hurt this person's feelings. I'll wait until later. You know, I'll do it in a nice way. You are being controlled. 